It's me, Dr. Detail again. I'm on a mission to disprove astrophotography. My counterpart did a great job previously showing that color in astrophotography is fake. Twice. But he also proved that color is in general fake. So it's also fake in real photography. So that doesn't really show much about astrophotography in relation to everything else. I have to prove it's all fake. To help me out, I've been developing some instruments to help measure things. Just look at this scale over here. It will, I hope, tell me how tall a nebula is. Let me step on it to test it on myself. Transferring to alternate universe now. 197 pounds? Wow, I am pretty tall. What's that? You say I'm not measuring things correctly? Okay. Let me measure myself again. 45 pounds, 78 pounds, 45 pounds. Huh, you are right. This scale is unreliable. There is no way I can get an accurate height measurement with this. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. So right now, you may be asking yourself, Dr. Detail, why are you trying to disprove astrophotography? Are you a flat earther or something? You even live in space. Well, that's a good question. I am a man of science. I need to know if astrophotography really is something real, or is it all fake? Has my counterpart been making make-believe videos for the past year? Is he in cahoots with NASA or something? NASA, if you're listening, I'd like to be in cahoots with you. By the end of this video, we'll show how good or bad the measurements of unprocessed raw images in astrophotography really are. The results will probably surprise you. So let's look at astrophotography from a scientific-esque perspective and try to put numbers to it. Numbers are, after all, the most real thing humans have ever made up. But seriously, real is a big nebulous term. What we want to do is determine if astrophotography is scientifically valid. But before that, we need to know if our measurements are reliable. You can't show something is valid without reliable measurements. What do I mean by that? Well, pretend for a second that you are an experimental psychologist. Yes, yes. And you would like to measure love. I'll be Dr. Detail and you'll be Dr. Love. How do you measure love, Dr. Love? Well, you could set up a survey and ask people how much they love someone. But that is boring. Let's attach electrodes to people's head and show them pictures of people they love and measure the electricity of the surface of the scalp. Yes, yes, it's fancy. Let's say this type of measurement makes sense. It might not, by the way, but we'd still have to demonstrate that it is a reliable measurement. What do I mean by that? Well, put simply, reliability of a measurement is how consistent a measurement is. In other words, do we get similar results given the same inputs each time we measure something? But how can we tell if our measurement is reliable? We measure our participant twice. We can then see if the results match. Let's plot the results. We got a love measurement of five the first time and seven the second time for our willing participant. Hmm, that's only really one data point and it doesn't tell us very much. Let's take 100 participants and do the same thing. If our measurement is reliable, the first and second measurement should be correlated. So if participant two scores high the first time, they should score high the second time. If participant three scores low the first time, they should score low the second time. See, it looks like there is a correlation here. Excellent. Now for 97 more participants. Well, bad news, Dr. Love. We've ran the participants, plotted the results, and just look, no correlation. There is no consistency here. We can test this using a fancy statistic called the Pearson Correlation Coefficient, or R. R is, unfortunately, very close to zero. We want this to be close to one. We want our data to look like this. See how R is around 0.8, and you can draw a line through the data points? That's pretty good. It means that around 64% of the variation in scores in the second measurement is related to the first measurement. We'd be getting fairly consistent results if this were the case. The example you did is what I would call test, retest, reliability. You measure something once, then measure it again with the same setup to see if there is a correlation. We're here to disprove astrophotography though. We can do something similar to determine if it is unreliable and thus not valid and therefore not real. So how will we do this? Well, just replace participants with pixel locations of two stacked images of the same target and replace love with brightness. 
we can take a pixel from a stack of four registered subframes and compare them to the corresponding pixel of a stack of four different subframes from the same target. We repeat this for each pixel. New to astrophotography and don't know what stacking is? I suggest you take a look at my previous video my counterpart did after watching this one. Okay, so if our measurements are reliable, then we should see a strong correlation between the two stacked images. But each stacked image has millions and millions of data points. Let's just use this region of IC405. I'll stack four images I took of it and crop the image. Then I'll do the same thing with four different images. To stack the odds in my favor, you know, disprove astrophotography, we won't do any post-processing of the stacked images. See how dark these images are? We're sure to have a whole bunch of numbers near zero. How can we possibly find a correlation of zeros? There's no way these two measurements are reliable. <laughs> Me, Dr. Detail, will destroy your illusions of astrophotography and then take over the world. <clears throat> uh, you weren't supposed to hear that. All right, here's the code. Let me run it and, oh, wow, I'm going to need to double check this. Maybe test retest reliability isn't so good. Let's try something else. Don't worry, we'll come back to these results once I verify them. There's another type of reliability. We'll call it intermethod reliability. We measure the same thing, but using different equipment and check the results for consistency. Here is my processed image of IC405 taken with an 80 millimeter refractor and using the Hubble palette. Here is the same target from ESA Hubble. This image is much better than mine, but the image was taken with Palomar's Observatory's 48 inch telescope. So different equipment, much different equipment. For this comparison, I'm going to align our two images and crop them similarly to our previous test. Go ahead and make it grayscale. You can see that this image has much more detail. I like it. So we'll go ahead and find the correlation between the pixels. While I run this code, let's return to our test retest reliability results. You know, the comparison of just my stacked images. I know this is disappointing, but the correlation between the two stacks of four subframes is 0.97. It's totally reliable. Unprocessed, unstretched images give consistent measurements even with limited data. And it gets worse the more images we stack. Comparing two stacks of 27 subframes, the correlation between the two is 0.996. Horrible. Astrophotography is measuring something. How can I rule the world now? Okay, calm down. I can still make them disillusioned and take over the world. I'll show them the results of the intermethod reliability test. When they're upset that it's unreliable, I'll come in and tell them I'm the only one who can fix it and they'll make me their leader. Oh, um, was I talking out loud? <laughs> Uh, funny joke, just ignore it. Yes, if they think it's just a joke, then I can tell them my plans in a way that makes my loyal viewers love me, but keeps the rest of the people calm. <laughs> joking, <laughs> joking. All right, so what's nice about the intermethod reliability test is that I will show you that all this post-processing stuff probably makes everything unreliable. See, I don't have access to ESA's unprocessed data, so we'll see how my data compare after processing. Let me run the code and oh, f Correlation is 0.94. That's pretty close to one, considering we use different telescopes and cameras and everything. It seems astrophotography reliably measures something. It's not quite as good as using the same setup, but it's close. So is astrophotography scientifically valid? Well, it's reliable. Let's stay tuned for a future video to find out. And check out this one on how I processed IC405, or this one that the algorithm recommends.